Hello, this is Mark from I'm Organic Gardening, located in Zone 6B in the state of New Jersey on this beautiful, gorgeous day. Today is March 27th, and yesterday we had uh, 82 degrees outside, warm but extremely windy, but amazing. So I'm sitting here in front of my raised bed, and probably in another month or so, like about the middle to end of April, we can start planting outside. But today's video is about planting inside, what we can plant inside so we can bring those plants out and get them in our garden right away. I'm sitting on my raised bed and I, my cover crop is growing here of winter rye. Apologize, but it's extremely bright right now outside. It's early in the morning and our cover crop here is doing very nicely. It's anywhere from two to four inches tall. It's getting that carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere and putting it back into that leaf mold and soil in the ground, which we'll be planting a couple different items in there, including carrots and tomatoes, but it's doing its job and it's looking very nicely. And here's my garlic bed that I planted late. Uh, I was actually waiting for the garlic to go on sale so I can buy it and save some money. Garlic got expensive of last year I think a lot of people were using it more than often but we got it planted up and it's looking very very good also too. So I drove around all day yesterday and I finally found a uh, person a landscaper chipping up a tree so I asked him if he was willing to drive it over to my house I gave him a tip and I got a pile of wood chips. So let's go inside and start with our normal seating tray. They usually call this a 10 by 20, uh, 10 inches wide or deep and about 20 inches long. Now, if you measure it out, it really comes out to be like maybe 10 and a half by 21. And in here we have these six packs and usually there's 10 of them, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and that makes 60 per tray. Now, when also you buy it online, you might see other things that will say 72 per tray or even more or less. Now, most of the heights of these things on the inside is about two, let's say two and a quarter deep, and also, let's say it's about an inch and a half wide on the inside, uh, this way and also this way. So that gives you an idea of what I'm using. And we're gonna fill up some coconut core in there and we're gonna see how much coconut core it takes to fill up one of these trays. But let's start this first. I have a list of things that I'll be planting up uh, this time of the year. Now this is a guideline. I'm in the USDA zone 6B, which is here. Now also this will be on my Facebook page so you can get a better uh, view of it. But also anywhere between March 27th and March 31st, and this is for starting seeds indoor only, not planting outside. And you can see the list, artichoke, broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower, celery, chives, collards, dill, kale, kohlrabi, lettuce, uh, mustard greens, leeks, sage, Swiss chard, and thyme. Now, all this is great to start indoors, and usually I'll keep them in the tray here for about 30 days, and after 30 days, I can plant them outside. Planting outside, depending on weather and severeness of storms, and we might get snow again, that something like kale, also too, we have to harden these off before going outside. And hardening off is that these plants inside this tray here are very tender because they're inside, they're not used to the elements outside. So we have to acclimate them. And the way I do it is I do it a 10 day acclimation period and I do it an hour each day. So if I start on a Monday and I just put on the calendar, one hour outside on Monday, then the second day is two hours, third day is three hours. And that's what I do until I get to 10 days and 10 hours. So. Now, again, like I mentioned, this will be on my Facebook page, and these are all the things I'm starting aside. So I wanna show you now, when I fill these trays up, how I do it, and how I do is do a simple planting. So I placed my seedling tray here inside a large mixing tub. Now, uh, these are usually at Home Depot, Lowell's, or even Tractor Supply. And this size here I have is, let's say, uh, 21 US gallons. Now this is nice because once you work with soil inside or even outside, that basically anything that falls off of your tray, you can easily scoop back up and place in your tray again. And I'll show you that in just a second here. 
You have a standard brick here, and usually they weigh about uh, 1.4 pounds. And once you put them inside a container, and you have to hydrate them, and they'll start expanding again, this will turn into, let's say, about eight quarts, give or take. Now, it can vary per manufacturer, but it seems like it gives us at least eight quarts or two gallons of nice, coconut core. You do not have to add perlite in here ahead of time or lime. The pH is anywhere between, I believe, uh, six and a half to seven. So it's kind of a neutral thing. So you don't have to worry about that. And now we're going to take here our, let's say, eight quarts or two gallons and see how much we can fill up in the tray and how many trays we can get out of it. Start off at an angle so you can see it. Normally I'd lay it flat, but there's not enough room in here to lay it flat down. So we're just gonna have to wing it a little bit. So we're just gonna start adding it in here, like so. Start in the middle first. And you don't have to compress it. You can just use your hand and slide it up and down nicely to fill everything up. Now, some of this coconut core is wet and some of it's dry. So we're gonna make the best we can here. So, and it seems like we're doing very well. Now I'll move this out of the way, like so. And we'll bring that back shortly. And then we'll level this off. So you can see here, we have nice it filled in here. Plus we have some more sitting in the tray that came off the top here. Now, like I mentioned in another video, what I do now is, and we'll finish up and I'll show you that we can at least fill two trays up of 60 cells. I just take this and compress it down about a quarter of an inch on top of each one with just a cell here. And that gives me a little bit of a compaction to take out some of the air gaps. And coconut quart is fantastic by itself. Now we're gonna put worm castings on top, like so. And now I'm down anywhere from, let's say, uh, a quarter of an inch. And then we'll fill worm castings up on top and then plant our seeds into it. Now, here, you can see that I have at least half left. So you can get two trays out of just one brick, which is awesome. So it's a great start. And each brick, usually what I pay for is about $4 for a brick on average. And, but everything's going up in cost. I saw something the other day that I went to go buy it uh, last week and I bought it and I needed some more and it was up like $5 in within just a week. So it's going a little bit crazy. So what you can do, if something is a half inch deep, you can place your seed right on top of the soil here and then cover with worm castings and you're fine. But let's say it goes only at the surface or a quarter inch deep. You can fill some worm castings on top and just press your seed into the worm casting and then layer another worm casting on top. Now, one of the questions was posed to me, how long does the worm castings last for nutrition? Because if you notice worm castings, they're very low in N, P, and K. It's not the amount of N, P, and K a fertilizer has that's going to help you. It's all about the living microbes in here. Because when you add those worm castings in, in here, just one second, I'll do that. We have some beautiful worm castings I bought online and there's all different you know, manufacturers. I recommend that they all are great. Now there's higher worm castings than ever before. Worm castings I bought online and I'll, I'm gonna do a video where I take the microscope and look what's growing in here in the future. Now, when you buy worm casting on lines, people might say there's difference, but they're all generally very good. There's some that are excellent and you're not going to get too much benefits out of it. So just look for price and understanding how much you're buying. So, but anyway, in here, what we can see, we're just going to take those worm castings and just layer on top ever so slightly here. And now we're just going to smooth it out. Now we can put our seeds down first before we put our castings on top. And also we can just put our castings in like so on top and level them out and then we can just make little holes and plant our seeds in there and then give it a nice little top dressing also too. Now also we're going to take this out and we're going to apply water in here at least a half inch and 
since coconut core is such a great wicker, it's going to bring it up to those worm castings, take those nutrients so, and saturate it. That's why we don't have to mix the worm castings in with the coconut core ahead of time. And it's all going to drain down feeding those roots. Now, a lot of, there's a few people that have been asking me, how long does the worm castings nutritional wise help? As long as you keep them inside this growing area or the size of this tray. If you transplant them outside into the garden, you're gonna add a little bit more worm castings. But they're gonna survive, let's say I grow cabbage, the cabbage is gonna get, let's say, two, three inches high, I don't have to add any more worm castings. But let's say I grow tomatoes, once the tomato roots start getting confined to this area and down below, if you pull the plug out and you can see those roots coming out or even going to the bottom of the tray, they need to be transplanted in something bigger if, you, if uh, the time is persistent that you cannot plant out in my area. Usually it's about May 15th you can plant tomatoes outside, but I'm planting them later and later. So I might take this and put it into a four inch pot, but I'll add more worm castings. As long as they're sitting in this tray for about 30 days, they're fine, but after 30 days, you should transplant them because they're gonna get root bound, and also too, you should have more worm castings. If you have any questions about what I went over and if something's not clear, please write to me before you plant up something. Now, there's uh, light requirements for this, there's uh, soil temperature requirements for this, but if you've been doing it and you have a great system, stick with it. Now, in Johnny Seed's catalog, they'll tell you, let's say you're growing cabbage, which I'll be planting up. It will tell you the optimum range inside the catalog. It usually doesn't tell you on this, uh, the package, but if you look in their catalog or you go online, it will tell you what's the optimum range for, let's say, starting a seedling in this uh, coconut core mix. Let's say it's, um, 75 degrees i'm just guessing i haven't looked yet or something like that but they all do well because in another month you can direct seed some of these things outside and i want to go into that also too for a little bit if you don't have the money for the cost of the trays or the coconut core or the worm castings you can direct seed some of these things directly outside the only difference is going to be is that some of them might rot because of soil temperature they might not germinate properly that type of thing so that's about starting things indoors so you have certain plants. Now, what I do on my farm, I always do both because there might be something that goes wrong that I'm busy one day and forgot to water for like two or three days and I thought I did it or something else emerged that came up and all of a sudden my seedlings were doing great and guess what? No water, no seedlings. And then I was like, oh, then I can just at least plant them outside. There's always something going on in our lives and we have to kind of adjust to that period. So don't ever give up gardening if something goes wrong right in the beginning. It's, you know, we're human, we make mistakes, but it's the confidence of getting back onto that horse again and trying to get things done and prepared for that season. Now, if there's, like I said, any questions you have about this, please write in because someone wrote in and I didn't think about it, but like how long does that worm castings last in the tray for nutrients? As long as they still stay inside this pack for 30 days, there's no problem. You're gonna get all the nutrients you need and it's gonna be a healthy plant to plant outside. The other thing I wanna to touch on before I go too, and I wanna make a separate video of this, if you grow your seedlings organically and then put them outside in an organic garden, they will do perfect. If you grow them using other situations besides organic gardening or maybe a chemical process, then you bring them outside and plant them in the garden, they might have a good 50-50 chance of failing because they're not accustomed to growing in that condition. They're not being helped by microbes. Organic fertilizer doesn't need microbes. It goes right to the plant, right inside the system, and gives it. The only thing is, you have to constantly keep giving that N, P, and K to that plant because it doesn't extract it from the soil. Now, there's people that I know that, let's say they buy tomato plants or eggplants or peppers or cabbage, and it's not grown organically. They actually will take that plant, like let's say a cabbage plant, out of the original soil that it came with, wash all the roots up, and then replant it in worm castings and coconut core, and then get it, let's say, acclimated to that 
uh, structure or that delivery of nutrients prior to planting it outside. So that's another thing that people are trying and they're having great success with it and plus improving the quality and nutrient density of that cabbage in the garden. Thank you very much for watching. Always a pleasure to see you all and we'll get <laughs> the gardening schedule right on track. Unbelievable. Still can't get over there it was 82 degrees yesterday and windy. But enjoy gardening and I'll talk to you soon. Thanks. Have a great day.